All right, so this is gonna be a rather chill video. I'm trying to I'm trying to make these a one cat, just like one. You get what I'm saying? Because I have to go in like less than thirty minutes, and I wanted to share a couple of things that I've learned in the past couple of days, weeks of working on a couple of different things. Uh, since we are already in this little project, I the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the stack timelines. Now, usually. To be honest, I didn't use this as much as I thought I would, but I found it that it, it is really great and helpful to use if you're going to use or if you want to have like variations of two clips um, and then see them side by side. Uh, these are all the same clips right now, right? But if you were to have like, if you were to A-B test an ad, for example, and you want to, you were creating that, right? and you wanted to see them side by side, that's probably the quickest way to do it. Now, what I have not found a way to do is, is to see both stack timelines in like two screens at the same time. Maybe there is a way to do it. Uh, and if there is, then that would be actually pretty great. There is a way to show two screens right here, but then the left one only really shows the media stuff that you have here. So it's not exactly what I was looking for, right? But yeah, that was just a little first thing that I've found out not long ago and I actually I think saw somebody's workflow on Premiere Pro doing that and I thought well that's actually the way to do it right so yeah that is the thing that I learned about stack timelines and probably if I end up working up on, on like similar projects like trailers and stuff like that I'm, I'm working on a few then that's gonna turn out to be really helpful and yeah now since I'm talking about that if you're gonna work, if you work on any type of client project, make sure you never, ever make edits on that main project that you sent. So let's say you sent a review video or like something for review or to get feedback. Always make a copy and work on that second copy for all the feedback that you've gotten, because you never know what's gonna happen and you don't want to lose that first base. If something happens, and yeah, and that just adds a few extra layers of protection. But yeah, now the next thing that I actually used to, there used to be this thing in Fusion right here. There was this little warning sign that you could click, right? And it'll show you the error log and stuff like that. But right next to that, here, you can actually purge the cache. And that was something that I didn't know until recently. And it's actually pretty great and useful because if you're working on a pretty big, like let's say an animation scene for an explainer video, and you just want to get rid of the cache because for some reason right you right click purge cache and everything's gonna clear out and that was something extremely helpful and useful that i didn't know was there for the longest time i don't know if there was a new thing that they added like an 18 or something but that's just something that i learned, learned not, not not long ago <laughs> but yeah that's there's always something new that you can learn that you were not aware of right now let me show you this next point that I have right here, which is her just library. What I ended up doing, well, well, what I wanted to do was create like maybe a collection of a hundred different images that had all of them like were on green screen with the paper full animations and send them out as a freebie, right? Uh, not the actual paper full effects plugging, but they were all folded, fold paper or paper fold animated images, right? And I found this heritage library project or like section space when I was trying to find some public public uh, domain images that, you, that I could use for that. But turns out for these, they actually do have a bunch of free, free to use ima images and collections, right? But you are not allowed to uh, redistribute them. Redistribute. How do you even say that? Right. So you can make changes. You can use them on your projects that are free or commercial projects. But what you cannot do really is modify them and then reshare them with other people in a modified way. Right. Which is what I was going to do. I was basically going to add that effect and then share all, all of these images with all of you guys. But that is not possible because of the license that they have. So, yeah. 
uh, if you want images for some of your projects and if you want to download them, there's a bunch of them that you can download here. So make sure to check it out and see if that actually gonna that actually can help out or if you find interesting in your projects. And these are all extremely cool images, actually, right? And they have free downloads here. And that is the, the name, heritagetype.com. So you can go ahead there and then download these and use them on your projects. Now let's go back to DaVinci. Now the next thing is that that I wanted to know or like talk about was that the magic mask is just so fun to use. Hold on, let me get rid of these. The magic mask is so fun to use. I don't know why it, it, it just, if you're working on commercial projects, it saves you a ton of time actually. And if you're a colorist or you want to become a colorist, you definitely need studio because the magic mask is going to save you so much time. Like I'm not a colorist at all. And I've been just practicing and testing out with these uh, little quick video that I've been working on. Right. And the magic mask just makes things look so cooler because like I can go ahead here and then add these to the gloves and and then actually only use or like edit the color of the gloves. Right. And then I can actually create a separate or a, or a layered, uh, what do you call this, a parallel one that mixes it. That way you'll have one on the right glove and then the other one on the left. And that way you can balance both of them individually. And if you were to rotoscope this manually with polygons and stuff, first of all, it's not going to look as great. And then second, it's going to take you a ton of time. So yeah, Magic Mask is just like so fun to use actually and i've been using it a ton of like a few pro like trailer projects or like having stuff happen like compositing and stuff like that so yeah if you're not on studio and you're thinking about it just go for it the magic mask is one of the things that makes it so much worth it now a quick interruption this video is brought to you by my split screens toolkit so if you need split screens for your projects or you think that could be something that's going to be useful for you make sure to check that out on the swathi website download the demo try it out and if you like it then you can purchase it that's it let's continue with this video all right now there's another cool interesting thing that i learned which actually helped came out from the beta which i'm actually gonna look at that file right now which sergey hopefully i pronounced the name correctly shared with me the way to to add images or like any media inside a DRFX file, right? And the way to do it is by using a custom path inside the DRFX file. So if you have no idea of what I'm talking about, it's probably because you don't really build templates or macros. But if you're interested, just stay around for the ride a little bit longer so that I can explain it a little bit better. Well, that's not what I want here why can i not drag this this is basically the code what uh, a macro looks like right and what i have here is this custom path that you need and remember that in the macro in the beta beta version of the paper fall effect video i mentioned that i put this path on the macro on the loader node right so that it finds the media that we have here Turns out if we create a custom path right here and set this up to setting and then put that templates um, path, path map, I guess you could call this, then you can actually put the media files right next to your macros, right? On that same folder, which would be this one right here, the paper full effects beta um, folder in this case. Then on the loader, you just have to use, instead of the templates one, let me find the loader. If you use a loader node, where is this? Here is what it would have shown the templates path, like the preview, the one that I explained in the, in the beta video. Here it would have been templates, but you can actually just set, it, set this to be a setting that way, when you create that and turn that into a DRFX file, the DRFX file 
already has that media files inside of it. And when you install these, it will also bring that media files into the templates folder and it will directly find it there. So if you create macros and want to use images inside of them, this is an extremely useful thing and the key thing that you should know because it makes everybody's lives a lot easier. And it's what I'm going to actually do for the update, right? When I update these, I'm going to be adding, I have to add the custom paths and stuff to all the new effects and stuff like that. So yeah, um, actually I have this point here where, where I talked about the magic mask, but I wanted to actually talk about something else. So one thing that I've learned here uh, after I've been building a couple of collage and it was taking so much time, I realized that if you're building something similar to these, like a collage effect or the ones that don't require the mask to move in a non-linear way, basically. So like they're basically cuts, right? So if you're working on something like that, you can actually create a polygon for each of them and then add an actual just like a level or blend mode basically which is the opacity of it right to it and then you don't have to actually move each point uh, with having uh, the animation keeper on right here and the reason why I'm telling you this is that if you want to create your own paper full effects like that or collage effects like that Creating that, moving all those points was taking so much time because you add sometimes even more points after every like fold or thing that happens, right? So this is a workaround that I realized pretty much later on. I have I had already built like seven or eight when I realized this, right? So, so if you want to build something like that, you don't have to do this all in the same polygon. You can do that using these cuts and that would save you a ton of time actually because then you have to just build the mass and you don't have to move the points around because clicking takes a lot less time than clicking dragging and positioning a point right so yeah that's just an extra tip if you want to build stuff like these interesting things like that now let me since we're here on these macro ready i mentioned a little bit ago that i had this surface tracker and that i found a way to make these work an awesome way in the for the plugin right but this is only a studio thing turns out that if we use a planar tracker in some of these this is the one that i share on the beta turns out if we use a planar tracker we can get that same effect there we have so the way that the planar tracker works is all you have to do is go to if you have a paper fold that you're creating, what you want to do with the planar tracker is set the point right here of the reference time to one where the paper is already fully uh, shown and then just track back backwards and forwards and that should create all the different necessary points so that your image or video is actually aligned and it looks more realistic so it's tracked on your paper, right? Then just create a planar transform and then set this up for right coming after your media in, right? This is basically a little addition to that paper fold effects video or guide where I showed you how to build something like this from scratch. All right, now let's continue with the next point. Now this point is actually not really related to DaVinci Resolve. Right now I'm using my phone to record because there's a couple of things. There isn't really a Blackmagic camera app for Samsung or for Android phones, basically, right? But there is an app that allows you to create to record and log in log video. Most of them, and even in most of them, well, obviously all of them in 8-bit. But for some phones, it actually also allows you to record log in 10-bit, basically similar to what the the Blackmagic camera app does on the iPhones, right? So if you want to test that out, the app is called MC24 FPS. And that's what I'm recording with right now. And I can show you. Let's, let's hope this doesn't crash when I go here. 
this is what it looks like right and you have all the different camera settings right here and if i have not actually found a proper video talking about these these uh app that is not like two years old or something now this is a paid app it's like 17 bucks but i think it's totally worth it because it's a lot better than the normal camera that you would have on your Samsung phone and you can change a lot of things you can even have like this inverted color so that you can know how you are lighting your scene and all that stuff and also one thing that you want to know since we're already here if you ever record with your phone and you're not sure how how to manually set up your your focus all you need is something like this and then just put this up like that basically you always want to carry something like this if you want to manually focus things that way you know exactly the distance and you're not really relying on your eye because your eye can lie to you sometimes especially especially if you have glasses that way you just set up to be like that at the distance and right now it says that i'm around 70 so i set up the focus right here to 70. hopefully it looks fine it looks all right and i'm in focus and the background is not so in focus so it has a little bit of bokeh right but yeah and that was a little last mention oh also how do you get your phone to be able to display here and this is not really that venture related but if all many of you are on android and want to record with your phone connected to your computer so that you can see your phone right uh there's an app that has not been mentioned in a long time which is called samsung flow app and if you have a samsung phone just download that app maybe it actually works for non-samsung phones i'm not actually sure but if you do have a samsung phone download that app and then you can smart view really fast with your usb cable that way you're not really relying on wi-fi for that and that way you can see your phone screen and have that as a second monitor when you want to record yourself right uh like let's say you have your laptop for example right here you connect your phone since you cannot really see what's happening on your phone then you can set up focus so do everything from your laptop right here to your that's sitting somewhere here and that's it yeah so those are a couple of things that i've learned and i just wanted to share with all of you because i thought maybe one or two things from the th these can be helpful for you to know and yeah hopefully i actually yeah so hopefully i actually remember to write down things when i like learn about something like a little cool trick that way i can actually have like a little notebook with those tips that way i can make like a more like a longer compilation video in the future of like 10 things you should know about davinci or something like that right but that is basically to this video i'm actually almost time for me to go i have to go play apex Legends with some people that i invited me and i haven't played in a long time so yeah that is today's video i will keep you guys updated on the paper falls effect beta or like the updates on that if you have had the chance to try it out make sure to let me know your thoughts so that i can know what to improve and add into the effect so that when the launch is ready then everything is not perfect but pretty great let's say um and then 